Alright guys, so to continue on our path here of building a better network trainer, um, I'm actually going to take a little pause from building our class and just do a little investigation. Um, I'm picking up right up where we left off. We have the network trainer with our simple network trainer class here. Um, and we have this still set up from last time where we create um, a, well, let's see, 221 network and train it for the XOR data set. Now what we're going to do is, I'm trying to think of ways, uh, let's say, that I want to improve my training methods. So I'm going to do that in, in an inquisitive sort of way and just investigate what's happening here during the training process. So what I'm going to do, instead of just training this until I get the error I want, I want to look at how I'm actually getting to this uh, particular error. Um, am I shooting straight from beginning to end and getting it uh, immediately? Am I leveling off? Uh, what, what's happening? So let's do the following. Let's create a private list of doubles called error history. All right. Now this uh, list of doubles here, I'm just going to, as I train it, I'm actually going to add uh, my error into it. Okay. And it's going to be the error for each epoch. So let me track this error history. Um, and we'll go error history dot add error, just like that. So that will track it here in train data set. And back in the constructor, I guess we should initialize it. So let's say error history equals new list of doubles. like that. Okay, so that's going to stuff them all in there, uh, but I kept this private because I don't want the outside user to mess with it, so let's build a little uh, accessor method, okay? Um, like this. And I'll just call it, um, I don't know, get error history. So this will be a public double array, get error history. And it's just going to return this list error history dot to array, just like that. Okay. Now, what am I going to do with this? Well, this will dump out an array of errors, of doubles, right? That hopefully <laughs> converge. This should converge. Let's go back to our program here. And so right down here, I actually save the network to XML. So below that, let's save the uh, error history. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use um, kind of a, a format that looks like this. So here's an example. So the first data point will look like this, data point 1 with value 2.285. Data point 2 will look like this with value 2, hopefully, I don't know, 1.996. Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Three will be 1.805, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm just making this up. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, first of all, I guess I need a double array, let's call it error, to receive the, the values. Uh, so I can access it by going to simple network trainer dot get error history, just like that. And then I'm going to create a string array that's going to hold all of those input value, output value pairs. So one space error for epic one, two space error for epic two, etc. And I'll call it file data. It is going to be a new string of length error dot length. Okay, so now I can set up the size. And let's go ahead and format everything. So for int i equals zero, i is less than uh, error dot length i plus plus. I'm going to say file data of i equals i dot to string uh, plus a space plus error of i dot to string like that. Okay, so now I have an array of strings 
um, that have the input value or the index of which epic it was, space the error for that epic. Okay, now let's go ahead and write this stuff. So uh, file dot write, oh, you know what? It's gonna freak out because I don't have. Uh, up here, I'm gonna need to use, go using system.io for file, file garbage. Let's try that again, file dot uh, write all lines, that's what I want. And the place I want to write it to is going to be e colon slash temp slash, let's call it XOR network uh, training dot text. Okay. And I want to write the string array file data. Okay. Now what this is going to do is it's going to write all of these lines into this file. Um, overwriting it if it exists and it's going to for it's going to write each string it's going to insert a carriage return line feed and then write each uh, the next string in the array okay so let me hit we'll save f5 okay so this trained everything now let me open up my folder here which you can't see and there it is okay so here's my error um, so let's see, index right, epic one, 2.959, so the error starts high, goes down. Oh, see, this is interesting. So we hit 1.06, 1.09, 0 0.97, 1.02, so we're kind of bouncing around a little bit. 0 0.7s, 0 0.6s, oh, this is a big file. 0 0.6s, 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 oh, boom. Jump down, so it took us 7,454 iterations uh, but it looked like we were kind of stuck there for a while. Uh, yeah, see, like we were stuck here around 0.6 for quite a while, and then something happened right around, shoot, I guess only a few hundred iterations beforehand. I jumped from 0.6, which I was at for thousands of iterations, down to 0.5, that's 7,300, all the way down to 0 0.0000 uh, at 7,450. So. Uh, the reason I put it in this format is that I can import this into Mathematica and just plot it. So doing that visually is helpful. Uh, let me pause this and I will be right back. Okay, so let me switch over to Mathematica here. So now uh, this is just for importing the data. And what I'm going to do actually before I do this, let's go ahead and set the plot range to all. So this will import the data from my training.txt file, that's this guy import it as a table so it assumes that they are pairs and then it plots everything out for us just like that okay so let me make this big for you guys so that's pretty indicative of what we saw right the error started off pretty large almost three shot down quickly but stayed right around I don't know point six point seven maybe for from, I don't know, let's see, 400 epic all the way until the 7100, you know, thousands and thousands, slight adjustments being made. So let me go ahead and restrict the range here and go from zero to one, sorry, like that. Okay, there it is again. So now we're zoomed in between zero and one, uh, shot down quickly. So the error is really just bouncing around the, the algorithms hunting for this solution for actually kind of a long time, a uh, number of epics wise, and then it finally hits on it and boom, shot down, found the local minimum or hopefully the absolute minimum. Now this is interesting. So this is something we could um, perhaps be aware of in the future. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to do in, the, in one of these coming up videos is add something into the network that says if I've trained for the last thousand iterations and I haven't really gotten the error any better, maybe I kind of, you know, just randomize the weights a little bit, just nudge them a smidgen. And maybe, cause maybe what's happening here is on the error surface, I'm stuck in a local minimum for a thousand iterations and who knows, maybe I just finally got lucky and popped out of it. Maybe I wouldn't have been stuck here for a long, long time. Um, so, Something we could do is look and say, hey, you know, in the last thousand iterations, have I appreciably uh, gotten anywhere? 
If not, you know, I, I nudge the weights a little bit and maybe that kind of jostles everything up. The air will probably go up, but hopefully we'll then be at a place where it can shoot downhill again. Okay, so now to show that this isn't going to be the same every time, let me go back to my program here and we'll run it one more time. That took quite a while. Um, let's go back to our text file. That's the old one. This one is enormous. This is 25 megabytes. Wow, I don't even know if Notepad can handle this. We were stuck at 0.6 again for a long, long time. Oh, we never even got there. See, this is a perfect example. We made it all the way to a million, didn't even get there. Uh, let me try and do this in Mathematica real quick. Importing. I've actually never gotten one this long. Wow, I don't even know what happened here. <laughs> this looks terrible. <laughs> oh, I'm not even going down all the way to zero. So let's let's map this between zero and one. Oh crap. Sorry, I just imported the data again. I didn't want to do that. So, boom. Well, we were stuck there for a thousand, a million iterations. So that didn't work out. Um, so let's go back and try it again. Oh, done. In a split second. This time it took less than a thousand iterations to get there. So let's go plot this one. Sorry, I trimmed it from zero to one. Let's plot everything. And there you go. So this is less than a thousand iterations. Our error started off fairly low. Um, it tapered off here for a second and then started declining and then bam, straight there. Okay, so this is actually really good. Um, in the last three times I've done this because we've started with completely random weights, um, you can see it can take anywhere from a very relatively short amount of uh, iterations through the training algorithm to converge on the solution. On the previous one, we ran it for a million iterations and we were stuck in a local minimum. Now, we want to be able to avoid this. And so I think the next thing we should probably do is add a way to detect that that's happening, that I'm sort of stagnant for a while. And what I want to do is take each weight in the network and just, just change it a little bit, not by the algorithm at all, just nudge it. Okay. Because what's happening is I'm stuck in a local minimum sort of orbiting around this, this location that is uh, locally the minimum error, but certainly not globally. And by just altering the weights, um, and this is something we'll have to mess around with, see how much we need to alter them. But by altering them, this will certainly change the network and move us to a different location on the error surface. And from there, hopefully the algorithm can take over again and, you know, avoid the previous local minimum or gain momentum and skip through it or otherwise hopefully converge. Um, so let's just for giggles, let's do this one more time. See what happens. This one looks like it's taken a long time. Again, that one waited to a million. I can tell by the file size. You run it again. Oh, that one converged freakishly fast. This one has only 630 iterations. Okay, so let's go back and plot the data again. And there it is. This is similar to the last one. You can see here the algorithm is jumping around and doing all kinds of crazy stuff and sort of mellows out and then boom, falls right down. So it's important to know that you're starting from a random place every single time and what you're, how you're going to arrive at the solution could take a very long time. It could happen very quickly. Um, and that may not be because you have, uh, let's say different, uh, bad data or you have bad, um, methods or you have an inadequate network. It could just be that, you're, you've gotten stuck in the process. So we will look into ways to fix that, hopefully here in the future. And hopefully this helps you guys visualize a little bit 
um, about what is really happening. All right, later.